Hello, this is Eric Ackerman with Grammatacy Land Surveying. I'm going to do this video. It might be quick, it might be a little long, about field to finish and the power of field to finish. If you look at this right now, you'll see that we've got a site where north is oriented to the left of the page. We're going to have this layout here. And this north arrow will get flipped to the left just because it fits on the page better. And it may end up even being a 30 by 42, but we'll figure that out later. This is a new site. I did field to finish, made a video, and realized the sound was off, so now I'm redoing it. But let's just redo field to finish here just to show, it, show just how much of drafting gets done by field to finish. So that's a click of a button. Okay. Here's another button. Split all multiple codes. Okay. We just got to, this defaults to this. If you've never done it before, you'll have to make sure you're pointing to your customized uh, field to finish file. I'm going to do all the points. I have point groups so that I don't have to think very hard. You, you know, 7,000 uh, and ups topo, one to 299's control, 300 to uh, 400's found monuments, so forth. Anyway, we're going to do them all. Hit OK. So I think, what was that? Three, three or four button pushes. Here's another button push. As brutal as it is, it says use default settings for all undefined codes. They had two codes that were undefined they used. Not a big deal. No, we don't want a tree table. Okay, bam. That wasn't so bad, right? Now, I don't like seeing these points so big. I think that it just gets in my way. This is the finished product, and then this is the point entity. And this stuff all gets turned off and frozen. But for areas like this where maybe there's something there that I should know about, like uh, this uh, single white stripe, that right there, I, I don't want to have to deal with all this, so I just go to points, and I go resize point attributes, absolute, let's make it point 2, we'll do labels, and the number, because like I said, I use point groups, so I don't have to pick and choose which ones to do. I know they didn't do um, 2,000 points, but I give it that nice big range, and we'll do both. If there's two point numbers, bam, there we go. So now I can go in here and see the points. Here's the finished product, this and that symbol. Of course, when you, I have everything on layers that makes sense. It's not like everything is on layer zero or survey field. Um, you know, some thought was put into this. So I'm going to move this over to my other screen and then when we do the finished product, there's a lot of layers to turn off, but the three main ones are the uh, ones out of the box. Um, there we go. So that's what ends up showing up. There's a little node there. Nobody complains about it, but you can turn that off too. And then see how clean that looks. Then all we have for the spot grades is the decimal point there. And then the, this gets turned off. We might as well do it since I've got it up on the screen. And uh, oh, what layer is that on? Oh, points topo. There we go. It's at the bottom of the list here. So there you go. So there's a lot to turn off. Um, this drawing isn't 100% done. There are some edits to do. So we'll explode this line. I I just click on it and it tells me what layer it is. EX surf grade break. So I know there's not a grade break going across here. This is an underground utility. It's on the right layer. This one here is a surf EP. So we'll just explode it. Erase it. We'll explode that. 
Erase it. So there's two edits. Ah, and this one right here, a rogue electrical uh, line. And there you go. This won't be on white. Um, it will be on a different layer color, probably red. Not a lot of edits. Now, it's true, I've got all the striping to draw on here for parking and some uh, DTM to do and also curb uh, labels. So if I turn the points back on, um, we turn those on and we turn on the information it's associated with them. So now what I can do is there's a routine where I can label all these cur bottom of curb and top of curb with an automatic routine within Carlson. There we go. Um, what you end up with is a drawing like this one. And let me zoom in and then bring it over here. So you have a drawing where the curbs end up like this with an automatic routine where it has the top and the bottom. And then even some of this stuff is automatic. And so this is, a, here's finished surface stuff we do automatically. And then this is all in field to finish. Then the DTM obviously is done, the boundary. And then all this information is put on there there is drafting to do afterwards, but a lot of the work has been done. A lot of the line work. Now, some guys will go in here and draw point to point to point. They'll literally sit here and go, okay, I'm going to, you know, let me draw on the edge of the gutter. Oh, wait, let's zoom in. And, okay, here we go. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Click, 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 click. And lots of them do it. If you're a large firm and you're doing stuff that way, it, to me, that's, I don't think there's any excuse for that. I'm sure I'll hear some nasty comments on that one. But a large firm, there's a lot of overhead expense. They they tend to have to be more cutting edge to shave off time, keep be competitive. A small firm, especially if they've been around for 40 years, well, their, their guys are probably just clicking point to point to point. Not all of them. Some of them are on top of stuff, but they are out there. I know for a fact. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that this, even though Carlson has this out of the box, you can buy Carlson survey, you can do micro survey and do field to finish out of the box. You're going to have a lot of lines, rogue lines. You know, it's going to look a lot like this at first where you've got like, lines connecting weird because you're not going to know how to do it in the field right right away so there is going to be a little bit of time you're going to have to eat in order to give your client something like this and to be efficient like this it's just the way it's going to be i think it's worth it i think it's worth it to your clients i think the architects and engineers are going to like having layer standards and like having this you know here's the layout all those pink lines go away. Those are all grade break lines. So I have 3D lines and then we freeze them at the end. And then here's all the regular lines. And I could freeze them all for you, but I don't really want to take the time. But underneath those 3D lines are all the 2D lines. But for now, we need to do the DTM on this. And I'm not going to do that in this video, but you know, it might take 15 minutes, might take half an hour. Um, and then of course we've got the boundary and the stuff that was found and measured versus record. And then labeling the edge of pavement, that's an automatic routine too. So a lot of it's automated, but yeah, you're going to spend probably, you know, six, to eight hours drafting it up depending on who's working on it depending on some of the scope of work from the client maybe they want all the zoning pulled and listed and some other data but um, yeah works really good field to finish if you're a small company you should definitely have it 
if you're a large company there's really no excuse not to have it and if you're trying to be competitive as an employee you're trying to be somebody who's valuable to your employer yeah doing this awesome knowing knowing this well this was done by one of my crew chiefs beautiful job beautiful i mean i had three little edits that's nothing and uh, that's that's absolutely wonderful to see this and then it makes me e efficient it makes me able to go hey i'm only gonna have to spend this amount of time drafting this up so it's gonna cost this much less i'm gonna be competitive will it take a little bit of extra time in the field possibly uh, you know that that's kind of an interesting debate because you know different people work at different speeds in the field some people are more detailed some are less detailed um and then your scope of work could be different so i don't think that taking the time to do uh, the little bit of extra coding that is involved makes a difference in the field it definitely gives you a product that's better and the crew chief can see this at Carlson CE, which is what we use out in the field, that drafts it up as he goes also. So then he can see what he shot and see what he's done. So there's a lot of QA, QC in this also. So yeah, I recommend this if you're a surveyor. I think if you're a client, you're going to want to ask your surveyor if he does field the finish because it shows that he's try at least tried to keep up with the times. You know, this has probably been around for 20 years, I'm guessing. Maybe longer. Um, I don't know how long Carlson Survey has been doing Field to Finish. They've been around a long time. They have a great product. It's efficient. It's survey-oriented. and allows me to do a good job. And it allows me to know what's going on and, and uh, allows me to draft things quickly, quick turnaround. So a lot of times, even when I... You know, I will do this to look at it myself, then I'll hand it off to my drafter. Because I'm only spending maybe from the time I star net the job to do my least squares adjustment uh, to figuring out what scale I want, the sheet and field to finish, maybe an hour at the most. And then of course the boundary is a whole different discussion, right? That, that can be super easy or it could be really complicated. But I just do that in a different drawing and XREF it in. Um, but I have picked a basis of bearing for this already. Anyway, that's my little spiel on field to finish. I think it's a powerful tool. I think it's a tool that every surveyor should master just for their own sanity. I don't like sitting here clicking point to point to point. I, I mean, I've got better stuff to do. The clients have better things to spend their money on. But yes, there are surveyors who still do that. Yes, it's something I see. I also see surveyors who will take all these points here and keep those on and turn off the number. And then that's what they have for a, um, a symbol to, as a, a finished product. I don't think that's the way to go, but I see it all the time. And a lot of that, I think, is just not keeping up with the industry, not keeping up with field to finish. You know, here's a symbol and a hose bib. Done. I mean, I don't have to. This stuff, yes, I'm going to have to label that. And there's a spot routine that draws these, an, a leader with an elevation. So, yeah, it's not, it's 90% done is what it is. And that's great. <laughs> If you can do four or five keystrokes and be done 90% done and have three edits, I mean, that's fabulous. So that's that's my opinion on that. I think that, um, I think that I'm going to wrap this up. You know, here the tree uh, text didn't quite come in right. Stuff like that's going to happen. Um, this was supposed to be a tree table and that would be a number. I said no to it, so that's why it's doing this. Not a big deal. You know, I think there's one, two, three, four, f five, six trees on the site. So if you have a huge site, I, I will usually say yes to the tree table, and then it just numbers it, and there's a table over on this side that you can 
insert. I didn't want to do that here. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. I'm a Santa, uh, Santa Barbara land surveyor. I work in Santa Barbara County. I have an office in Los Olivos, one in Goleta. Just look us up on the internet, Google Santa Barbara land surveyor, San Inez land surveyor, Goleta land surveyor. We're the only multiple rated, five-star rated company in the county. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. Grammatici is Latin for land surveyor, G-R-O-M-A-T-I-C-I. -I. My name's Eric Ackerman. Thank you for listening.